Here I've got the XPS 15. This is the Intel 13th generation Core i7 machine. It's a 15 inch machine and we're comparing it to this 15 inch machine, which is a MacBook Air. It's got an M2 chip inside of it, 16 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM. And we're gonna do some tests, uh, some developer related tests. I'm not gonna go into all the details about uh, comparing these machines from a physical standpoint. You can see those videos on other channels like Max Tech, for example. But I will tell you this, I use the MacBooks as my daily drivers and I really love the keyboards, the trackpad, the screen. And out of all the different PC laptops that I've tested, the Dell XPS 15 comes the closest. It's solidly built, it's heavy, it doesn't bend. The lid opens with one finger. The keyboard is not quite as clicky as the MacBooks and it has a little bit more resistance, but it still feels solid and I feel confident about which keys I'm pressing. That's enough about that. Let's talk about performance when it comes to different programming environments. We're gonna start off with Python. We're gonna get into some Docker and some Node and JavaScript. But first, just the machine sitting there, I can definitely hear the XPS 15 making noise. I do have a few programs running and of course the MacBook Air is completely silent because it does not have a fan. But let's compare the temperatures. Now at rest, the XPS 15 is at 39 degrees Celsius and the MacBook Air is at 28 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna kick things off with a Docker test. Now this is an Angular application that's been Dockerized and I have a video with Chris Rivera showing how to Dockerize an application for production and that's what we're gonna be doing right now. I'm not gonna be explaining it in this video, I'm just gonna be running it. So all I wanna do is say Docker build and then build this project and we're gonna see how long that takes. So I'm gonna do that on both of these machines. And the first time I run it, you gonna see that it takes no time at all. And in order for it to detect it, that something has changed so it can rebuild the application, we need to make a small change. So I'm gonna go over here into the code base and just change something real quick here. Now the build process for the application will kick off from scratch. We already have the image downloaded, so that's not something you gotta worry about. I'll link to that video I did with Chris down below so you can check out the details of what goes on behind all this. Here we're just running the command and let's go. Okay, here we go. And the MacBook Air is done. That took a 11.1 seconds on the MacBook Air and 14.4 seconds on the XPS 15. Let's make a quick change here. I'm gonna do this one more time, just making another change so that the rebuild process triggers again, just so that we kind of have an average of uh, the times here. Okay, pretty consistent with the MacBook Air, 10.5 seconds, a little bit faster that time, and a little bit faster, 13.9 seconds on the XPS. So the MacBook Air wins this one. Now you might be wondering, well, am I working on WSL in Windows or am I working in Windows Windows? <laughs> well, I am working in Windows, but let's say I were to run this in WSL as well. Let's check that out. So I'm running this now in WSL and this is a clean build from scratch, which means it's running inside Ubuntu, inside Windows, and we're getting, uh, well, it's it's not that much slower. 14.4 seconds. I think that's the same time we got the first time. Here we go one last time. 14.4, pretty consistent here. So apparently it does not matter whether you're building this on WSL or on Windows directly. Docker is running on the same virtualization engine, so you're getting the same kind of build times here. And the MacBook Air wins this round. I'm restarting these machines just so that uh, we get a nice clean slate as far as memory footprint and what programs are open. And we're gonna change gears a little bit here. The next thing we're gonna do is Python, and I'm gonna use Benchmarks Game. This is something we've uh, done on the channel many times before. I'll link to this down below if you wanna run this yourself. This website compares different languages and their speed with different algorithms. And I'm going to choose the Mandelbrot algorithm here in this case, because this particular algorithm fills up all the cores that are available on the machine. So it's a multi-core performance test. We will do a single core performance test as well, but let's start with this. The algorithm I'm using is gonna be Python, and we're also gonna be doing Node.js here as well. So we're gonna get Python and JavaScript. And of course, we're gonna have the Schwarzenegger 2.0 execute executing the tests. When I push the big red button, the little fingers are gonna go down and push the enter keys at the same time. So we're gonna see who wins this race. We're gonna use the time command to run Python and then the algorithm with a parameter of 16,000 and we're gonna pipe the output to dev null so that nothing is spewed up on the screen. Let's go. <laughs> All right, shouldn't take that long. Let's see who's going to win this. I have my suspicions. Okay, we have a winner. Wow, a winner by long shot, in fact. Uh, this is going to be the XPS 15 at 29 seconds. 
4.7 and 44.68 seconds for the MacBook Air. So this operation is considerably faster on the XPS 15. That new 13th generation Intel Core is really good. I'm gonna do that one more time just to see what's going on. And I wanted to show you the load on the CPU. You can see that on both of these machines, this is completely maxing out the CPUs on both of these, all the cores. And on the MacBook Air, we have four efficiency cores and four performance cores. They're all being maxed out. And there's a total of eight. While on the Dell XPS 15, there's 20 cores doing the work here. By the way, I did this a similar test on the XPS 15 last year's model with the 20 core M1 Ultra machine. If you want to check that out, I'll link to that video down below. That way you have a similar number of cores. All right, so we have more cores on the Dell XPS 15 and it shows because that machine is finishing this test a lot faster. We have pretty consistent numbers for the second run, 45.7 seconds on the MacBook Air, 30.1 seconds on the XPS 15. Here we go, another test of the Mandelbrot algorithm, this time using JavaScript and Node. Same parameter, 16,000, and let's go. Whoa, <laughs> that, that, that finished fast? Wow, uh, they both finished really fast. I guess JavaScript is that much faster than Python. All right, I'm not gonna say anything. Not that kind of video. <laughs> so we have uh, 1.15 seconds on the XPS 15 and 1.9 seconds on the Air. Almost two times faster on the XPS 15. I wanna increase that parameter a little bit so it doesn't take half a second to run this test. Let's increase it to 50,000. That seems appropriate. This will give us a chance to check out Activity Monitor 2. All right, and let's go. Yeah, so on the activity monitor, we can see we are still maxing out all the cores, even over here with the JavaScript test. This is Node, so we can spin up multiple threads in this case. Same thing happened on the XPS 15, but it's done already, but you can see that big spike on all the cores. And the result is 7.48 seconds on the XPS 15 and 17.4 seconds on the Air. So quite a bit slower on the Air. Yes, yes, you can see the disappointment in my face. I am disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, the Dell is a lot more expensive. This machine is uh, $1,600. It's got the 16 gigabytes, so it's a little bit of, of an upgrade from the base model, the Air, and the uh, Dell XPS 15 is $2,600 machine, so it's $1,000 more. But how's the Dell gonna do with the one core performance test? Let's do that next. In this case, we're just implementing a sorting algorithm, and it's doing a merge sort in NumPy, which is actually written in C++. Plus. So we're gonna see the C++ performance here, which should be pretty fast. And then we're gonna see the Python implementation of TimSort doing the same exact sort of uh, 10 million random numbers. All right, let's get it on. Can't believe I just said that. All right, let's, let's do this. <laughs> here we go. Oh, not looking so good for the air again. Wow, that NumPy sort finished really fast on the XPS 15 at 0.8 seconds, and on the air it finished at 1.12 seconds. Now, Tim Sort didn't finish that much faster on the XPS 15, but still faster 20 seconds and 21.3 seconds on the MacBook Air. Let's do that one more time just to see what's going on here. Uh, and we are getting consistent results for NumPy. So this means you can see single threaded operations that are pretty similar in C++, compiled C++, and you can extrapolate that out for whatever tasks you need. You will find that the XPS 15 is gonna be doing this faster. We got 19.5 seconds for Tim Sort on the XPS 15 and 21.3 seconds. I gotta give it to the air though, it's very consistent. <laughs> at, least, uh, at least it's that. 37 degrees for the XPS 15 and 31 degrees on on the MacBook Air. Hey, look at this, same shirt, but different haircut. What's going on here? Well, this portion of the video is actually brought to you by DragonflyDB, which is an open source, multi-threaded replacement for Redis. It's built to utilize modern cloud infrastructure, meaning it can get 25 times the performance from the same instance size when compared to Redis. This allows workloads to be run on half of the resources, dramatically reducing infrastructure costs. Learn more at dragonflydb.io. Thanks to DragonflyDB for sponsoring my haircut. Folks, stay tuned for more tests. If you like this video, if you found it informative or helpful or entertaining, you know, the Schwarzenegger and everything, give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time or I'll be back. Bye.